The first step to installing the rock rails is to remove the lower body cladding that covers the rocker panels. To do that, we remove three bolts. There's one in the front and two in the back. To do that, you need an eight millimeter socket. Once you've removed the one screw from the front of the lower body cladding and the two screws on the back, you'll need to actually remove the body cladding itself. So now to remove the lower body cladding, you're going to use a, a small trim removal tool and a small pry bar. And in order not to scratch the paint, use a small piece of cardboard. This is part of a cereal box. That works pretty well. Just get it behind the rocker, or behind the body cladding. You don't scratch anything. Just cry out until you find the factors. You hear them pop. You just work your way along the lower body cladding and remove all the fasteners. They're uh, they're plastic. They're one-time use. You're probably not going to save any, so don't try. Once you've removed all of the top clips, you go ahead and just basically yank the lower body cladding off of the rocker panels. It's going to get a little bit messy. There you go. So once the dust settles, we're going to go ahead and use our trim removal tool and finish getting the clips off. Then go ahead and remove the clips from underneath the rocker panels. After you finish removing all of the lower body cladding fasteners, go ahead and wipe down the lower door sills and the rocker panels so that they'll be clean when we put on the new rock rails. That way there's no, no significant amount of dirt or small rocks that might get trapped underneath them, which could cause the paint to abrade and eventually rust through. So get everywhere from the door sill to the bottom of the pinch seam. And that's done, we'll need to, to use a chisel and remove the body sealant here so that the rocker panels, once they're mounted, are able to fit flush up against the bottom of the rocker panels. Now use your trim removal tool and we're going to go ahead and remove these two fasteners that are just clipped on to the plastic wheel well liner. Just pry those apart and they should come off. Look just like that. There's two in the back and there's one in the front behind the front wheel as well. And we'll just use our trim tool and our pry tool like this. Off it goes. Now we're going to use a one inch wide sharp chisel to carefully scrape off the body sealer from the bottom of the rocker panels so that when mounted the new rock rails can fit flush against the bottom of the Jeep.
take just two seconds and vacuum out all the holes to remove any pieces of the plastic clips that held the body cladding in place. Because if you get any pieces of plastic in there over the years, they might start to move around, which could get really annoying. This way you don't get any funny noises on down the road after you spend all the time installing your rock rails. Next we're going to drill out the second and fourth holes starting from the rear. That allows us to install our nut certs so that we can bolt in our rock rails. So in order to drill those holes out we're going to use an 11 30 seconds size drill bit. Since we're drilling metal, don't forget to protect both your ears and your eyes, because if you get one of those metal splinters in your eye, that could definitely ruin your day. After drilling the holes, we're going to go ahead and mark the ones that we're going to use, and we're going to install the nut certs, which hold the bolts, which hold the rock rails onto the rocker panels. So starting at the back of the rocker panel, I've marked which holes we're going to use. We're going to use most of them, but we're going to skip the third hole, the fifth hole, the seventh hole, the eleventh hole. In order to install the nut certs, we're going to use the special tool that comes with the Mopar rock rails. Now it's imperative that we oil it every time that we use it. Get a drop of oil between the head of the bolt and the washer, as well as this larger spinner nut and the washer, and on the threads of the bolt itself. So before we install that, let's go ahead and lubricate it. I'm just going to use a synthetic oil. This happens to be bicycle chain oil. Works pretty well. And after every nut cert we install, we're always going to lubricate this. So get some on the threads. And also get some between the middle nut and the washer and the head of the bolt in the washer. Every time. In addition to the nut cert installation tool, we're going to need a 9 16th inch open-ended box wrench, as well as a torque wrench capable of accurately measuring 10 newton meters of force, and a 10 millimeter socket in order to tighten the nut cert installation tool. So we'll use our box wrench to hold it, and it's imperative that you hold it perpendicular to the angle of the sheet metal. Hold it firmly so that it doesn't move, just put your box wrench over the top and continue tightening. Probably faster when you get started if you just do it by hand, but as soon as it's tight, you'll need to use the wrench. Now, as it starts to compress the nut cert, the force required to turn it will increase. And about halfway through the tightening sequence, it will actually decrease and as you near the end, it will rapidly increase in the amount of force necessary to finish tightening it. Do your best to make sure you hold it still so that it goes in straight. your torque wrench drive direction and remove the nut cert insulation tool by loosening. Sometimes it helps if you have a screwdriver style handle to finish backing out the bolt. It doesn't take a lot of force and it takes too long with a uh, conventional ratchet. So this will make it faster. have now successfully installed one nut cert. How it works, let me get one I can show you. As you insert the bolt, and as the bolt is threaded through the nut cert, it, when you tighten it, it squeezes it, causing the nut cert to compress this direction, 
and expands outward, which pinches the cap against the sheet metal, and the bulge in the middle of the nut surf squeezes against the cap, thereby holding it in place. So I've just oiled up the insulation tool, and remember, oil it every single time you install a nut surf. Get it started by hand. Double check your torque. Looks correct. Go ahead and tighten the second one. Be sure not to over tighten them. That's why it's so important to use a torque wrench. When installing nut certs along the underside of the rocker panels, there are eight holes. We will use all eight except for the hole just in front of the seam that we scraped the body sealer off of. After you've installed all of the rib nuts, take a moment to put the rock rail on a floor jack and then with both doors open in order to allow clearance for the upper lip of the rock rail to go over the lower edge of the rocker panel, take a moment to line up the holes with the appropriate rib nuts. This is easier with two people, but you can definitely do this by yourself. Just take your time. Everything lined up correctly. And slowly lift it into place. This is the cap that fell down. It's pretty easy because the top edge of the rock rail is fairly sharp and it'll catch that edge. So just gently pull the rock rail back, squeeze the cap back into place. You might need to keep a finger on that while you work the jack with the other hand. Now we'll attach a couple of the bolts loosely to hold it into place while we move the rock rail exactly into position and we'll hand tighten, we'll hand install and tighten all of the nuts and then with the rock rail centered correctly we'll torque everything down into place. As you carefully lift the rock rail into position make sure that you get the inner fender liner both in the front and in the rear fenders inside of the forward edge of the rock rail. And in the back of the Jeep, the back of the rock rail, the wheel well liner should also be just inside of the rock rail. Now this is kind of caught on the edge of the rock rail, so we're going to use a tool, a wrench will work, and just push that back so that in, inside of the wheel well liner sits flush with the inside of the, of the rearward edge of the rock rail. Using a floor jack for support, once you've lifted the rock rail into place, Use a screwdriver handle and a Torx size 30 bit and use your bolts to hand tighten the rock rail into place. In case you're wondering, my markings are actually done in dry erase marker. Once we have all of the bolts loosely in, we can go ahead and release the floor jack, which will allow the rock rail to hang into place so that we can line up the bolts underneath and secure the rock rail. Now we're going to hand tighten the seven bolts that go underneath the rock rail, attaching it to the bottom of the rocker panel.
After all of the bolts and the rock rails are hand tight, finish the job by using your torque wrench to tighten all the bolts to 10 newton meters. We've now successfully installed rock rails on our new Cherokee. What do you think?